In this case, I definitely have an upper, which is going to be that parabola, and I have a lower, which is gonna be that line. So if I wanna draw in a sample rectangle, and we're gonna use rectangles the same way that we used to find the area under a single curve. Do you remember Riemann sums? I've got a video here if that's helpful. Well, if I'm gonna draw a rectangle, I'm gonna draw it from my upper curve down to my lower curve. Now there are gonna be infinitely many of these, which is why the integral works so well. Well, this determines if we're going to be integrating with respect to x or with respect to y. Take a look at that rectangle. That rectangle has a width in the x direction. So dx is my width and my height is going to be the distance between those two curves. Finally, I'm going to need some limits of integration, but for these examples, my limits of integration are where my area starts and stops, and I want these in terms of x. So those limits of integration are gonna be the x values that I get from this point and the x value that we get from that second point. Let's go ahead and start to break this thing down. Now I'm gonna use these rectangles, so I wanna come up with my height. My height is going to be the distance between my two curves. With my rectangle up and down, that height is gonna be the upper minus the lower, so it's gonna be the difference between those two. So I'm just gonna write upper minus lower. In our example, that rectangle height is going to be my upper, which is four minus x squared, minus my lower, and my lower is that line, x minus two. Now we can of course simplify this so that we've got a height of, I'm gonna distribute that negative and let's collect some like terms while we're here. I'm gonna get a negative x squared. My x comes from the negative times the x, so that's gonna be an x. And then my constant terms are gonna be the four minus a negative two, and that's gonna give me a plus six. So this is gonna be the height of my rectangle. Let's put the area together for all of these rectangles. We're gonna have several of them, infinitely many. So that total area is going to be the sum of all of those areas. So we can go ahead and use an integral for that. We still need our limits of integration. We're gonna do that next. But it's really inside here, my height times my width, my height which is the difference between my functions times my width. So we get the integral negative x squared minus x plus six, really a nice integral here, and then my dx. Let's find those limits of integration. Remember those limits of integration are gonna be those x values that line up with my intersection points. So I'm gonna have my A is gonna be here and my B is gonna be there. And I'm gonna get that by setting my two curves equal to each other. So I'm gonna take my four minus X squared and set it equal to X minus two. So I've got four minus X squared equals X minus two. So solving for those limits of integration, I want to um, get zero on one side, this one's a quadratic. So if we're lucky, it'll factor, and I think it will. So let's move everything over to the right-hand side. So that means that I wanna subtract the four, subtract the four, and add the x squared, add the x squared. We end up with zero is equal to x squared plus x minus six. This one factors, right? I can use a two and a three. So zero is equal to, just factoring this, x times x is that x squared. And to multiply to be negative six, I'm gonna use a three and a two, but I want that x in the middle to be positive. So I'm gonna use a positive three and a negative two. That gives me two x's, negative three and positive two. This is going to be my A and my B. Let's put everything together now in our integral. So putting this all together, my area is equal to the integral from my lowest x value, which is negative three, to my highest x value of two, my height, which is the difference between those functions, minus x squared, minus x plus six, and then a D x. 
a really nice one to integrate. Let's go ahead and go through the calculus now. I'm gonna start by integrating x squared. Just a nice power rule really on all of these. My power goes up to three and I'm gonna divide by a three. For my negative x, my power is gonna go up to a two and I divide by two. So x squared divided by two, and then that six is gonna become a six x, so six x. And I'm gonna be evaluating this using my fundamental theorem of calculus part two between negative three and two. Now at this point, I need that fundamental theorem of calculus part two to evaluate my antiderivative at my upper limit minus my antiderivative at my lower limit but that is a ton of work. So instead, I'm gonna take that antiderivative and I'm gonna put it into Desmos as f of x, and then I'm gonna ask Desmos for f of two minus f of negative three. Let's go ahead and put this right into Desmos. So capital F of x is equal to negative x cubed, so negative x cubed divided by three, um, minus x squared, luckily I just need this in here one time, divided by two, divided by two, and then plus six x, plus six x. So now let's go ahead and grab the next empty cell and I'm just gonna ask it for my antiderivative at my upper limit minus my antiderivative at my lower limit. And it gives it to me as a decimal, but I can go ahead and click on the fraction icon if you need it instead as a reduced fraction. And there's our answer of 125 sixths. In our next example, we've got three different curves. So we've got two y equals three radical x. We've got y equals five, y equals five. And then finally, we've got this line here, two y, I'm gonna lean to the side here, plus x equals four. Now we know that we've gotta decide these three things, starting with the direction of our rectangles. Now we absolutely could put our rectangles in vertically as we had done before. But if we do that, there's this dividing line which changes what my upper and lower functions are. I end up with an area one that has the upper function, which is gonna be my blue curve, and my lower function, which is the green line. And then I end up with an area two with an upper, that's supposed to say upper, looks like no, with an upper function of y equals five and the lower function in area two is that curve. I don't wanna do two areas if I don't have to, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what a horizontal rectangle does. So if I instead draw in a horizontal rectangle, I end up with, for the entire area here, as I'm going in the y direction now, I have a rightmost function, which is my red curve, and I have a leftmost function, which is my green line. And that's gonna be true from my y value up to y equals five. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna go from C to D here, but I know that that upper limit is gonna be five. Okay, so dy or dx, I definitely want a dy here because of that rectangle. That rectangle's width is in the y direction, so I end up with a dy, which means I want all of my functions in terms of y instead of in terms of x. Let's go ahead and do that work first. I'm gonna get rid of this rectangle and let's do a little bit of algebra. I'm gonna start with my rightmost curve. My rightmost curve is 2y equals three radical x. I want x by itself in terms of y. So I'm gonna divide both sides by three, divide both sides by three, and I end up with 2y divided by three is radical x. Let's go ahead and square everybody, square everybody. And I get 4y squared divided by nine is equal to x. So that's gonna be the new version of my rightmost function. Let's do the same for our leftmost function. The leftmost is 2y plus x equals four. 
This one's really nice to solve. I just need to move that 2y over by subtracting. So x is equal to 4 minus 2y. And this is my leftmost. Now with the other orientation, we did upper minus lower. But for this orientation, we're going to do rightmost. This is to get the height. We're going to do the rightmost minus the leftmost. So as I put my rectangle together, starting with that height, my height is equal to the rightmost minus the leftmost. So that height is going to be my rightmost in terms of y, which is 4y squared divided by 9, minus my leftmost, which is 4 minus 2y. And I'm going to put that in parentheses because we want to simplify this distributing that negative sign. <clears throat> so we get for our height, I'm going to write that in black because I'm where I want to be, 4y squared divided by 9 minus, um, actually let's do the 2y next, it just bugs me not to have it in descending order, so I'm going to go plus 2y and then minus a 4. We also have our width, which was going to be that dy. Now I've got one more thing to do before I put this together, but I'm going to put our integral together so far. What do we know? We know that the area, so summing up all of these rectangles as we stack them, is going to be from, I haven't figured out what that lower y value is yet, c, that limit of integration, but I know that my upper limit of integration is a 5, so my highest y is going to be a 5. I'm going to take my height, which is 4 ninths y squared plus 2y minus 4 times my width, which is dy. Okay, how are we going to find that lower limit of integration? Let me go back and show you our curve. That lower limit of integration is the lowest most y value for this area, which is going to be this guy right here. It's where the green line intersects my curve. So I need to set those two equal. I do want my limit of integration in terms of y. So let's take the functions in terms of y and set them equal. Okay, I'm uh, running out of room, but I think I can do it here. So let's find that limit of integration. I'm going to do it down here. And I want to take, um, it's where the green line intersects the red curve. So I'm going to take 4 minus 2y is equal to my red curve, 4 ninths y squared, and that's it. So let's go ahead and solve this one. It's a quadratic, so I need everything on one side of my function. I'm going to go ahead and move these two over. And I end up with 0 is equal to 4 ninths y squared plus 2y minus a 4. This guy's ugly with that fraction, and I definitely don't want to use the quadratic formula, so let's multiply everything here on both sides by a 9 to clear that denominator. So times 9 times 9. So that's going to give us a much nicer looking quadratic to solve, and I get 4y squared plus 18y minus 36. I can also divide everybody here by 2, just cleaning things up as much as I possibly can. So divide everything by 2, and then I'm going to solve. Uh, let's see, so I get 2y squared. 18 divided by 2 is 9, plus 9y minus uh, 36 divided by 2 is 18. Let's put this together into a factorization. I get a 2y times a y, and then that 18 could be 3 times 6. Um, let's try 3 times 6. So if I put a 3 here and a 6 here, that's going to give me a 12 and a 3. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. So let's see, I really want 12 to be positive. So that 9 is positive, and then I get a minus in the middle. Now, if you're not sure, you would multiply this out and then make sure that it matches that original quadratic. I'm sure, and I'm feeling really good about what I've got here, I end up with two possible solutions. So I want this to be equal to 0. So 2y minus 3 could equal 0. 2y 
equals three, right? So y would be equal to a three halves. That's one of our possible y values. Our other one comes from that second factor, y plus six equals zero. So y would equal a negative six. Let's go back and look at that curve. We had that y could be a three halves or a negative six. Well, negative six would be way the heck down here, and that's not part of my area, so I'm gonna cross this one off. We know that this upper y value is five, so three halves must be this lower y value. That was a lot of work, but now I've got everything I need to finish off that integral. So I'm gonna take that lower limit and let's go ahead and replace it with our three halves, three halves. Now I'm finally ready to integrate. So as I'm integrating, just some really nice power rules here. The integral, I'm gonna keep that 4 ninths, but that power is gonna go up to three and I'm gonna get it divided by three. So I get 4 ninths times y cubed divided by three plus, let's do the same power rule with the two y. That's gonna go up to a power two and divide by two. That one actually turns out nice. Two y squared divided by two. Those twos are gonna cancel minus four y, and we're going to evaluate that from three halves to five. Cleaning up what I've got here just a little bit, nine times three is 27, so I get four y cubed divided by 27 plus y squared minus four y, which we will evaluate from three halves to five. Next, I'm gonna use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I would do this antiderivative evaluated at five minus this antiderivative evaluated at three halves, but that's a lot of work. So I'm gonna let Desmos do some of this work for me. I'm gonna put in my antiderivative as f of y. It's gonna be step number one. And then I'm gonna have Desmos calculate f of five minus f of three halves. This most gives us our answer of this 26.77 about, but I can click on this little fraction icon and I get 2,891 divided by 108. This is hard stuff, but you are doing great. Next up are volumes.